The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them, they will never be thirsty. The water that I will give up will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming down here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know, and we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all these things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then, then his disciples came, and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or where are you speaking with her? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying hold truths, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know 
that this is truly the Savior of the world, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May God the Creator be praised, may Christ's compassion be made known, and may the Holy Spirit indeed come here and dwell in and with us. I offer these thoughts and words in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. So I'm the Reverend Jim Strader Sasser, and I'm the priest in charge here in this church building at Christ Memorial Episcopal Church in Danville. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, um, I am worshiping, at least in a physical sense, by myself this morning. And I pondered how to sort of do what many Episcopalians and many other Christians are doing today, how to worship and to worship in the community of people where I serve. I just read from the St. John's Bible, our volume six of the heritage edition of the St. John's Bible to be more precise. It's a beautiful work of scripture and art, and it has all kinds of illuminations and interpretations of the Bible inside of it. And we have it for a year. I failed to mention earlier on that besides the traditions and worship of the church and reason that Episcopalians very much are people of scripture. And so even though we cannot share our sacraments in person with one another, I hope that I can share a few thoughts and ideas that may help us all ponder how to encounter Christ as the Samaritan woman did at a well in the middle of a day while no one else was around. Last week, I talked about the difference between knowing and believing. And I asked the folks who were seated in these pews if there was a difference between knowing and believing. And last week's gospel had to deal with Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus, a Jew and a very learned Jew, perhaps a rabbi, most assuredly a scholar. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the middle of the night to inquire as to who he is because he knows that the Messiah is coming, and yet he's not quite sure that Jesus is that Messiah. So they have a discussion about God's love and who are the people who love God and follow God. And I mentioned last week that Jesus convinces Nicodemus to begin a deeper walk of belief even as he continues to know the faith that he has raised him. This week's story is different because the Samaritan woman is a Samaritan. In fact, she is sort of the opponent of Jews. Samaritans and Jews were very much, I think, in some ways like Democrats and Republicans today. They both sort of had a common understanding of how they were in relationship with God and in our nation, and yet they had distinctly different opinions about how the world was supposed to go. And so the Samaritan woman is in a very uncommon place. She's by herself, out in daylight, in the middle of the day, doing something that would be typical for her to do, drawing water. Jesus is completely out of his normal environment. He's in the middle of Samaria. His disciples are away from him, so he is by himself in a foreign land speaking to a woman which was completely not allowable in that situation. And God among us is thirsty. He seeks water like we do to remain hydrated. I think about that now as many people are afraid to go out and find water or find things. And here in central Pennsylvania, it's next to impossible to find a roll of toilet paper. So Jesus and the Samaritan woman enter into a conversation. And he suggests to her that it's not just about water alone, but it is about water beyond what quenches our thirst and water that provides us eternal life. And so bit by bit by bit, she explains again that she knows that the Messiah is coming. 
And Jesus this time, unlike with Nicodemus, says, I am he. I am the one. And she's like, give me this water to drink so that I may live and that I may have a life more abundant. And Jesus reminds us all and her that it is believers that God is seeking, believers that believe in God's eternal love, believers that demonstrate faith in the very worst of times, believers who believe as they stay, sit in their pews or not, believers who believe 